Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm a little exhausted, but I thought I, you know, record a quick episode. All right. So let's get into this, <clears throat> guys. I might have to also write out this episode. So look at the screen. All right. Let's see. What can a tired human being say? So, we start off with the title. Unknown beings that named the void. I mean, it doesn't get more poetic than that. So right off the bat, <clears throat> something we got to realize is we got to divide a sentence. This is pretty much how I deconstruct like language, okay? For example, when I look at this sentence, there's four ideas here. So, by this, we got to look at what each means. So, we have unknown. There we go. 
the soul is like the unknown X variable of life. Okay, guys. Let me come here. We're like, what's a being? Now, in order to name something, we require to be conscious individuals before we can name that which is separate to us. And then we have the most, one of the most beautiful ideas in existence, the idea of the void. So in other words, what I'm playing around here with is literally this. So you see guys, the situation is, we are told from one side, one corner of the universe, that we're these creatures on a rock in the middle of nowhere, but upon further uh, observation and self-inquiry, one discovers that we are not just a known self in a known world, we are a known self, excuse me, we're an unknown self in an unknown world. And this means that for the first time in human history, mankind's psychological relationship with reality has divided into four positions simultaneously. That means once they thought that there was just, you know, 
a known self you know or an unknown self you know if you look at religion you see there's the idea of unknown worlds what I find to be super fascinating okay is that this is really an honest statement that we are these unknown beings and in the middle of nowhere we've named everything and our grandparents, our ancestors, agreed upon certain realities and they tunneled through them. Do you know we're not just inside the world. We're inside the world uh, our ancestors have left for us. And the sign that your ancestors were smart, were, that, were they helping the species or not? There isn't much you can do really. You know, you either want to see how human greatness looks like before you die. Or you're, you just play the game of misery and pull everything down. You know, they say that the archetype of the fallen angel in theology, the reason the angel fell was because that angel, instead of changing itself to adjust to the authority of God, it wanted to change the world to be correct. Sorry guys, this was on mute and I was talking. <sighs> okay, what I've written here is we are so we're these creatures that are acting like they know what they are but actually don't know what they are. We're creatures that feel incomplete by the nature of our existential situation. And you know guys, just for fun, I'm gonna, I've never done this before, but I'm gonna try to type and uh, speak at the same time to see if I can even do it. if youth is being occupied with is occupied <coughs> with being something that it is not and old age reminds us of how we could have been our true selves the whole time that's really 
the kicker, right? That imagine at the end of this life you realize, oh my god. You know, it's like imagine this whole life is like you took a photograph, but you forgot to get rid of like the shutter. <laughs> What I'm trying to say is that I'm like, yo, everybody's acting like they know what they are. But like true spirituality is like realizing, oh my God, it's a question mark. So when you realize that there's an unknown possibility to human intelligence, it's as if the species is becoming aware. The species is awakening to its multidimensional birthright. You're going to realize we are way more advanced as creatures than we think we are. And what really thought is, is that it's a mask. So it's it's kind of like, like, you know, that scene where uh, that Bruce Banner couldn't become the Hulk. He didn't believe in himself. <laughs> And it was as if like they're like yo somebody get the hulk angry or humanity's doomed and hulk's wife just goes there it's like honey i want a divorce you know and hulk suddenly gets angry and you know smashes like the divorce papers you know it starts from there <laughs> Imagine being like Hulk's therapist, you know, and being like, I swear to God, if you break my office again. <laughs> Anyways, to continue. Dear humanity, do not fear that everybody is being an unknown being. We are all projecting and in moments of our certainty of our expression, we solidify into entities. It's not really that we're individual human beings here. We're just these unique moments of intelligence that have an ability to animate. So for example, right now that I'm talking, sure, I'm an individual human being with a name and da 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 da. But when I'm, when I'm, when I, if I choose to sit still just for a moment, just for an instant, I choose to be still and I truly press pause on my whole life, on the story of my life and my inner realms, you begin to realize that this world is trying to train us by giving and taking until we understand what, what life is giving and taking away. Okay, that means some people are like, yo, man, karma is, uh, <clears throat> you know. It's like karma is a car horn, you know. <laughs> but in reality, karma is like a code. It's like clues. You know, this world is alive, but it doesn't talk to, to us directly. It talks through vision. Do you know what that means? That means like we speak through language, you know, which is a lesser dimensional technology than our brain to convey to each other. Higher dimensional beings, they don't communicate through language. They communicate through instantaneous knowing. So what that means is they don't, they don't, they don't communicate. They just put the reality in your mind. That's what they do. They don't, they're not, how would I say, creatures of language like us, right? Language is, a, is, is an inferior technology. Language is another way of saying like, okay, uh, like a 2D being try to, you know, interpret a 3D experience. It's like, good job. <laughs> So the important thing is to understand what we're standing under. <coughs> and what we're standing under is an unknown world. So to be honest, 
to consider ourselves as an unknown self is the most honest thing to do. <clears throat> that means for a second, forget the ego, and before you were an ego, what were you? It's like, I don't know if people remember, but I have a memory of myself before I learned language, and it was just pure sight. We are actually experiencing being the space before we move in it. That's why the mind is here. The mind is faster than what we see in front of our eyes moving. It's like the idea of an illusionist. An illusionist has such incredible ability of sleight of hand that you don't even see the sleight of hand. And the result happens. Now, what if our intelligence, our mind, your higher dimensional beings are like that? Do you know, what if they're just in our blind spots? It's kind of like, imagine somebody suddenly turning around. It's like, oh my God, is that my spirit guide? You know? <laughs> You know, it, it, it's like I have been wondering about what kind of beings we are for a long time. And I realized more than we're human beings. The greater truths of the small is the big. Believe it or not, there's these ideas. I would, I would, I can totally see this concept of an alpha soul, right? And the idea of an alpha soul is the idea, the contrast between an immortal and eternal being. Because an immortal being cannot let go of the shape of reality, but an eternal being is shapeless. So in the subtitle, I've written Conscious Entitlement to Worldhood. So what does this mean? <coughs> okay, it means one, unknown beings. Two, language and names. Three, or excuse me, unknown being. <coughs> okay, let me see. We have unknown world. We have unknown being. There we go. <coughs> there we go. This explains everything, guys. This is this is history. These six lines I've written here are history. You know, I don't know if people realize it, but these these six points are like phases of humanity up to this point. And so beyond the language self, <coughs> we're discovering the experiential self. And therefore we reach the experiential world.
and the experiential world is when the self and the world are inseparable so for the outer realms i'll give it 3600 years from now for the inner realms anytime you want baby <laughs> just, enlightenment is like that instant you know kabir was asked how long does it take to get enlightened and kabir was like buddy it takes half of a half of an instant and his disciples fainted like <laughs>
So, <clears throat> upon, so we have that at consideration. Now we're like, okay, what is the void? The void equals <clears throat> end of animate meaning of life. Okay? So the void is kind of like, you know, they say the enemy of my enemy is my friend. There will come a day where the human species will stop bothering itself. And it will realize that emptiness is the enemy of our enemy. We are all allies and friends when it comes for our species retaliating against emptiness. It's kind of like, do you know what it is? I remember when I was young, or very young, right? My father was like, would drive the car and I, I had this feeling like he was responsible for the reality when I was in the car right <clears throat> so now I have come to this point where I feel like I am seeing way more a much more advanced vehicle and it's as if right now you know it, I think this is really the purpose of a lot why a lot of 90s kids were born you know like all those kids born in the 90s it's as if they have still like the memories of the natural world but also access to the technology of the unnatural you know I realized that I was the one of the last generations of kids who climbed tree. The rest, like, you know, I asked my cousins, you know, and, you know, it's like my cousin knew every app, you know, in the app store, but he had no clue, you know, he had never climbed a tree, never achieved, you know, the small victories that lead to the bigger one. You know, these Mr. Within talks, each talk I give and I live on to give a talk another next day, I'm like, okay, one victory, one victory. It's, it's like, it's like, they, there's the story, it's like drop by drop, you know, it's like, you know, pressure is built up on the dam and the dam breaks, you know, something, something in those lines, if there's a hole in the dam. Anyways, where am I going with this? So, dear viewers, this is the great game. The great game is not to go, you know, buy, get buy a Bugatti, you know, <clears throat> and shout at people. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> Just shout at the world to get in your Bugatti. You know, there's more to life, you know. <clears throat> Even though Bugatti is a nice vehicle, you know, as an from an engineering perspective, I can't ignore that, but, you know. <laughs> <coughs> but what I'm trying to say to the viewers is this it's an IQ like a puzzle okay what is more important what is the most important thing in this life this is like a, ch a puzzle like they should give to ki children until it's like every human being should try to solve what is the point what is the most important value you ask some people, they're like, God, man, you know, who the hell are we? You know, and you ask somebody, it's like, yo, what's the most important person, point in uh, value? And the person's like, yo, of course, my dreams, my ambitions, you know, who I want to be, man, you know. <clears throat> and you ask some people, and for them, it's just their legacy, you know. For others, it's just having fun. It's sort of hedonist. You know, you only live once in this texture, kind of, you know, experience it fully by... So there's so many different strategies being implemented. I mean, that's what really it means to be a human being. <clears throat> but what is a strategy for the species against the void? And this is the idea of the, like us, this is the, I thought this is the healthiest approach that if all the species, every person on the planet was listening to me, like for example, to, to this exact sentence, it's as if I was like, okay, you know, it's, I, I've seen in like movies like Cast Away or something, right? When a person is cast on a, cast away on an island, they have no choice. And what do they do? They use what's around them to survive. So I was like, okay, what if I, you know, paint this picture for the human species that we are cast away on a galactic island and the outer space is like the unknown waters, okay? And Earth is like a ship we're all on. Right, and it's like when we mess up the climate or there's too much satellite debris in the atmosphere, that's like a sinking ship. But it's like we're all on the ship of a planet, you know. It's like we're not in the planet, we, you know, we're not in the ship for some reason. We're outside, like on the roof of the ship, like you know, uh, you know, setting up tents, you know. 
Can you imagine, you know, a bunch of, uh, uh, in the, in, like, in a futuristic sci-fi Star Trek setting? They're like, yo, where's the captain, guys? And they're like, yo, the captain's on the roof. And they're like, what do you mean? And you see the captains, like, set up a tent with, like, a campfire, like, on the roof of, like, the spaceship, like, going in hyperspeed and, like, ma- roasting marshmallows, you know, with, like, I don't know, hyperspeed engines of the spacecraft. <laughs> But anyways, the idea is the void. So, you know, it's like there's different fears. Like, if somebody says, Mr. Within, are you a collective being? I would say I have the honor of one. To me, if I abandon humanity, it's like I have abandoned my family. That means there was no honor to my lifetime. This is why it's against all odds we live for the greatness of the species it is the greatest idea it is the most beautiful idea that a creature is trying to like survive against all odds and people are like yo what do we do about good and uh, what do we do about evil violence and cruelty and you know what I say violence and evil and cruelty they're all gonna wake up all these beings that are interfering and disrupting the human experience, they're gonna stop because they're gonna see what they've been slowing down. They've been slowing down the genius of eons. You know, we, human, the human species, the moment it, it sets its end, intent upon the idea of the advanced civilization. And if you're religious, at the advanced civilization is, the, is in some sense, you can say, the greatest potential of the invention of God. You see, that means if you are the create, creation of the Almighty, then you, you deserve an Almighty reality. Do you see? It doesn't mean heaven, but it means that it's like the divine, the divine eyes are here through us. It's as if we are the divinity in a moment where there's nothing moving. Do you know? When I'm sitting alone in the room, like in my room sometimes is chilling looking at the ceiling on my bed, you know, I'm like, yo, I'm being the spirit of this room right now. <laughs> Hey guys, I just looked at the chat section. This is live. Feel free to ask questions and whatever. You know, the chat section section exists for a reason. <coughs> so anyways, to continue. All right, so to continue, right? So what I'm saying is what is humanity's greatest strategy in the void? This means whoever the whoever you think you are, whatever idea or thought you have, great, you know, slow hand clap for your past. But, but, but right now realize that the void means the death of the species and that's messed up, okay? <clears throat> like individual human beings dying, that's messed up too, but it's not as messed up as the species Uh, failing right so what the purpose of human life is is to contribute to a human endeavor and so mr within is requesting and urging all uh, interdimensional archetypes all people who feel all dehumanized archetypes present and uh, having a relationship with the human experience disconnect your possessions and on some level all forces in this universal sector are in some sense in the greatness of the glory of the inconceivable origin of the presence of reality in the middle of nowhere the great performance of a of a species begins it's the sacred dance of humanity that advanced civilization okay it's for the first time beings realizing how incredible it is it's a feeling i don't know maybe some people in in western cultures don't get to experience this but in certain eastern cultures there is um Like there is a, how can I tell you, it is totally possible on this earth to build a civilization so advanced that it has created more backup systems than it can fail. 
do you see what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to get 8 billion creatures to in quickly start, be, uh, in some sense, being advanced so they can build an advanced civilization, right? Some people may be like, yo, how is this? It's like, what's the point of giving everybody power? You know, it's like, why, Mr. Within? Why? Why do you want to give power to everybody? It's like, why do you give pearls to swine? And I'm like, yo, we don't have time to think we're swine. Right? That means everything we give to the species now. If a million secrets were revealed to the species now, it would not be enough. Because we are behind schedule. In our inner realms, the advanced designs are here. I am telling you, an advanced life is very possible behind our eyes. It's just that in the outer realms, we don't know how to change an ancient old system that's kind of like doesn't want to change itself. You know? It's like, where, where, where are all these evolutionary biologists, you know? It's like, I don't see them going and protesting to governments and being like, yo, we have to have survived by adjusting and adapting, right? So in some sense, you guys need to adjust and adapt you old school systems that don't realize so the world can be a better place. Because why in the shadow of the past, the future, you know, it's like doesn't get a chance. That's like, that's savage. Do you understand? It's like sometimes when I give these talks, I feel I have to defend an unborn future. <laughs> In the sense that the humanity now may forget it. You see, it's as if, let me tell you, it's an, uh, when the re if somebody was like, Mr. Within, what's an example of inner extinction? I would say any tactic or strategy that is making the human being forget it's human. It doesn't matter if it's technology, if it's spirituality, if it's ideological possession, if it's whatever sort of kind of possession or whatever sort of uh, your attention being locked somewhere. It's like at some point you will realize there is a reason you look like 8 billion other creatures. And so that feeling we have been missing is the feeling that you are actually in the living room of the greatest home in this world. So anyways, the idea is that these unknown beings are trying to find a strategy in the void, right? So the, the, the point would be if there is, if there is a strategy to the void, that strategy would divide into two components. So there would be in some sense... an external strategy and an internal strategy okay <clears throat> you know hopefully you know as the modern poets say yo your boys got this you know <laughs> i've come up with these strategies okay so the external strategy of the human species against the void is two words advanced civilization this is like even from a secular standpoint these these words advanced civilization to me they have a sacred value they are sacred to me do you know anyways the internal strategy advanced communicado communication <laughs> advanced civilization you know um, and by the way guys this thing I'm sharing here um, here this is kind of a spoiler but uh, book coming soon civilization 2.0 so civilization 2.0 is mr within strategy to indefinitely bypass extinction i'm that guy who's like yo i'm gonna i'm gonna share this you know i'm gonna be that guy people are gonna be like yo is this guy is for real and i'll be like you know go meditate <laughs> <clears throat> uh, 
<coughs> but anyways <coughs> so this is it so these unknown beings they can build stuff physically we could move our skeleton around right or we can move internally so it, in some sense what i'm trying to get to is as human beings <coughs> we get to move our move objects and subjects okay so what is the best way best way objects can be moved can be moved and then what is the best way subjects can be moved guys these two sentences are super important everybody should write this down and answer it for themselves so for an object something i learned over time is that patience that means it's like something is happening something has to happen and it's not like we can be decisionless and life goes forth that's weird right so what we do is we make decisions we live our life and we realize we are a lit candle in the dark in a dark room you know every day right believe it or not when I wake up I get this feeling I'm like a candle okay and and it's as if my mind and consciousness is like the glow okay and I, every day I'm waiting to see like what what comes in in this glow it's as if what what spirit of life is coming to meet me every day right and you know, I remember when I was shy, I was forced to observe like reality. And because I was forced to observe reality internally, I began to realize, like how would I say it, if, if somebody says an ability I think I've had since childhood is I could see karma. <clears throat> I could see karma before it happened. It was just obvious, right? It was obvious as a sort of feeling and knowing. Right, just like imagine like Goku in the in the anime Dragon Ball Z, he suddenly just shouts something and this energy ball appears in his hand. Like just like that instantaneous feeling and knowing, I would I, I get a feeling in the moment before something happens. Right? It's like building up to it. Right? It's it's like it's 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 as if like before if it's as if in slow motion you can feel the karma's about to like burst before it happens in a in a in a manner of speech. So these unknown beings, subjectively, it's like language. So here's the thing. And subjectively, act through the greatest idea your mind can follow. have opened and here we are the live stream of the human species and so dear viewers I'm going to show you how I write my poetry this is how it starts I just trust 
the winds of the inner rocks. There we go guys, you know, spontaneous poem. <clears throat> Once a man tore himself apart because he thought he wasn't himself. Oh how shallow the world was when eternity could not make a mistake. O oh, creature, it should be a creature. O oh, creature that has feared the secret that dwells behind your eyes, in front of your mind's eye, silent and loud, many come and go, claiming they saw their soul but had never. Do not be afraid, you're not just unknown, your whole world is. Trust in the pilot that you have always been. For beyond reason, the impossible is nothing. Fearless, carry your breath as the great banner of your species. Oh, you, dear viewer, dear human being, you don't just breathe as, a, as an object in the space-time continuum. 
stand in the honor in the grand light beams of the advanced civilization you see it's the it's the future you see it's it's kind of like some people who have been defeated by the past some people defeated in the present and the world is waiting and what they are waiting for is the permission to be their greater self that's it you want self-improvement wonder about how far you can see in this world Alright guys, thanks for listening. I hope this episode was helpful. Share, subscribe, comment, and like. Actually, it's a bit early. Actually, I got like 10 minutes. Guys, I could talk, you know, for 10 more minutes, but I'm feeling shy. <laughs> 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 Can you imagine like There's like where's the president? It's like he's feeling shy. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Hang on guys. You know guys, I think there's so many viewers right now watching that the YouTube system is glitching and it's just showing zero. <laughs> it's like, who's your fan base? Unknown beings in an unknown world. <laughs> Poetry aside, this is the idea. All right. Alright, here's my honest opinion, dear viewers. Yes, unknown beings, bunch of creatures, unconscious world, unconscious self, the unconscious self turned into the conscious self, the conscious self is trying to make the world conscious. What knowledge is, is the strategy of an unknown being to try to know itself while it's here in the unknown world. While we're alive, we're at an incredible advantage, an advantage that the unborn and the non-existential are not. So what is this advantage? This advantage is that if mankind believes himself to be truly free, this freedom means the expression of complete ability. So the idea is that human beings are being born in an incomplete position. And from this incomplete position, their whole lives is like a journey to complete ourselves. Now, I was thinking like, okay, individual human beings living, everybody's living for themselves. At best, the guy cares for his children. Then he cares for his grandchildren. Maybe he cares for his great-grandchildren. Then people stop caring. They either feel too old, tired, or, you know, never contributed enough to care. Right? But let me tell you what it is, dear humanity. We have reached that era where before the year 2050, or maybe even earlier, there's going to come an incredible technological revolution and innovation.
when this technology comes we would not have enough time to re to have realized how we were a creature and how language and communication was while we were being a purely natural being so this is why mr within is urging the species for one moment forget your past and care for the, your the future of your species that is your future that has always been your future it was never said but it must be now we are living for the in in the greatness of the advanced civilization do you know why do why do you think i feel i have the power or even I'm, i i should be even talking about this stuff you know why because in the in an unknown world known eyes are wondering about what can we do and what are all these human beings creatures doing on this rock and what is the greatest survival strategy and the greatest survival strategy is these eight billion creatures you know just like a survival uh, like show right it's like we're cast on an island so we stop fighting immediately organize every person has a task on earth every person has their great work on earth and the beauty of the human being is not just in its appearance but it's in its character which arises through its actions that means it's like something is moving us here. Do you understand? In the middle of nowhere, some dude is talking to the species online. Do you understand? It's like it's rare. Everything is rare. In the middle of nowhere, everything suddenly becoming the here and now. You know? And I understand the idea of self-love. Hundreds and thousands of people, sure. You know, it's like love yourself as much as you want. But it's like you're going to notice a species is breathing here. You see, the presence of the species, is it's like seeing one buffalo and being like, ah, oh, you know, a baby buffalo. And then seeing like a herd of buffaloes passing by, do you know, and you're like, oh my God, this reminds me of like tractors passing by. Do you know what I mean? So it, it's as if there's an intensity, there's a presence. You see, and, in, in, and really what it is, it's, it's, it's all about the advanced humanity. Because that is what's greater than myself, you know. Some people have this argument where there's like, no, there's nothing greater than yourself. Just live for yourself, man. What are you doing? Living for a, a world that can't, doesn't see you. And I was like, oh my God, you know, if you only understood the idea of God. The idea is that only a being that is advanced can give advancement only a being that is free can give freedom and guess what sometimes a being that is in the future can have access to geometrical designs now you see it's some people believe their soul is based on a story in the past story in the present and I was like yo am I am I being my future self's memory right now and suddenly I looked at myself in the mirror to see if I'm looking good you know and I'm like okay the future self can remember me now <laughs> fearless Humanity is its own greatness. We are living for the momentum of the potential of all that we are. Every human being matters. Every conscious being in this universal sector matters. And so, you know what's going to happen? Future mystics are going to access such levels of purity. Because what tends to happen is, is that, I mean, it's not just because of Kali Yuga, but <clears throat> the world is, is like, it's like we're experiencing the darkest hour of night. What is coming after this is the opposite of what has been. That means the world has experienced an absence of incredible advancement. And so the human being is burdened, it's given the ultimate task. It's as if like, it's like Thor wanted to give his hammer away and the human species out of all the other species could hold it. 
dolphins were like, and we were like, you don't have fingers, go back in the water, you know. (laughs) And so really, I guess I'm done with the notepad. I am left here in this world, in this moment with you, dear viewers. You know, I ask myself, like, how can I love myself if I don't love others and if I don't love the world? And it seemed like it didn't make sense. And I was like, man, if I was tired, which option would I choose? And I realized, okay, let me choose to love the world. And then I realized what it means to love the world means to love the presence of reality in the totality of your moment that is your awareness. Do you understand mankind is not here to act like a god or be a god? Mankind is here to in some sense realize that what is looking through his eyes is of divine presence. What that means is like it's it's like from religion, like it, the story is kind of fascinating. Why? Because it's like something that was made in heaven fell on earth. That means the heavens poured into earth. Do you know? That of the state of paradise, that of the knowledge, it's as if in the Abrahamic story, this is what really made me care to look at it again, where it was like God commanded man to say the celestial names. People don't understand what that meant. That was as if God, in some sense, created man's soul in a way where man's soul knows all souls in this world. That is our true power. But we, we think we're just these, what we see in the mirror. We think we're the gossip we hear. We don't realize. We are the presence of a living universe. How co- It doesn't get like more fascinating than that, than that. It's like, oh my God, am I existing right now? It's like, oh... <clears throat> Where's my cologne? You know, it's like, look, gotta look good for the gods, you know? <laughs> it's like, imagine the guy's about to go to heaven and he's like, hold on, man, I gotta put gel on my hair, you know? <laughs> what it is, is, is the potential of the presence within you. Because I am just a voice, and your ears and your mind is holding your truth, dear listener. And so all I can say is, rise, mankind, rise.